Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the Feast of the Assumption. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Peter Knox. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And with your spirit. This Sunday, the Church worldwide celebrates the Feast of the, Assum the Solemnity of the Assumption of Our Lady, Mary Assumed Body and Soul into Heaven. It's the, Mary is the mother of the Church in South Africa. This is our matronal feast. But I'm sure those of you who are joining us from around the world will want to celebrate with South Africa as we celebrate the mother of our church. We know that we are not always in a state where we're ready to be assumed or brought up into heaven. We know that we're sometimes cut off from God, from our brothers and sisters. And so we ask the Lord to forgive us as we say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, you assumed the Immaculate Virgin Mary, the mother of your Son, body and soul, into heavenly glory. May we always remain attentive to the things that are above and merit to be sharers of her glory. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. God's temple in heaven was opened, and a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was with child, and she cried out in her pangs of birth, in anguish for delivery. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon with seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems upon his heads. His tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to bear a child that he might devour her child when she brought it forth. She brought forth a male child, one who is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. But her child was caught up to God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she has a place prepared by God. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, 
now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. On your right stands the queen in gold of Ophir. On your right right stands stands the queen queen in gold of Ophir. Ophir. The daughters of kings are those whom you favour. On your right stands the queen in gold of Ophir. On your right right stands stands the queen queen in gold gold of Ophir. Ophir. Listen, O daughter, pray heed and give ear. Forget your own people and your father's house. On your right right stands stands the queen in gold of Ophir. So will the king desire your beauty. He is your lord. Pray homage to him. On your right right stands stands the queen queen in gold of Ophir. They are escorted and amid gladness and joy. They pass within the palace of the king. On your right right stands stands the queen queen in gold of Ophir. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. But each in his own order. Christ, the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father, after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death, for God has put all things in subjection under his feet. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Mary has been taken up into heaven. The host of angels rejoices. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. In those days, Mary arose and went with haste into the hill country, to a city of Judah. And she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the child in her womb leapt for joy. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit, And she exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the voice of your greeting came to my ears, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. For he has had regard for the lowly estate of his handmaiden. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. For he who who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him, from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of low degree. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent empty away. He has helped his servant Israel 
in remembrance of his mercy, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his posterity forever. And Mary remained with her for about three months and returned to her home. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As you know, today we are celebrating, the Church around the world is celebrating the the solemnity of Our Lady assumed into heaven. And the the doctrine or the dogma, which was first pronounced and first defined in 1950, is very well summarized for us in the preface of today's Mass. I'll just read an excerpt from that preface. Today, the Virgin Mother of God was assumed into heaven as the beginning and the image of your Church's coming to perfection, and as a sign of sure hope and comfort to your pilgrim people. Rightly, you would not allow her to see the corruption of the womb, since from her own body she marvelously brought forth your incarnate Son, the author of all life. So although this was pronounced as a dogma in 1950, that's very recently in church history. It's in fact been with the church from a very early age. Orthodox Christians have celebrated for centuries what they call the Domitian, the falling asleep of the Theotokos, the Mother of God. Today's solemnity is an affirmation of the central teaching of Christianity, that is, the resurrection of the dead the resurrection of the body, and also that Mary is interceding for us all. What I propose to do with us today in in this short homily is to go through the meaning of the readings and how the readings, one by one, apply to today's solemnity. In our first reading from the book of Revelation, we have a vision of St. John. It's not history. It's not John was filming something and wrote down what he saw. John has a vision, he has an imagination, he has an inspiration of a royal woman in childbirth as the central figure in this part of the vision. The woman and the child are threatened by the presence of a dragon. Of course, this relates to the persecution of the Christians, the early church in the first century being threatened by whatever's threatening them, probably state forces. The enduring message isn't about threat. The enduring message is that evil cannot overcome the child. The child's Jesus is not overcome by the evil which is threatening the infant church. And then a song of victory breaks out in heaven, praising God's triumph over evil. In the the psalm, on your right stands the queen in gold of Ophir. This was originally a secular wedding song. Most likely it was a secular wedding song from the time of King Solomon or Jeroboam or Ahab. It wasn't referring to Mary in particular. It was hundreds of years before Mary was ever known or before Mary was born. Obviously it's not referring to her specifically. It's not referring to the church because sometimes the song is applied to the church and the church is the bride of Christ. But it's poetry, and it's poetry which stimulates our imagination, which helps us to think more widely or more poetically, or using an image of the importance of Mary. It's not stating that Mary is the bride standing in gold of Ophir. In Christian spirituality and in Christian tradition and theology, we always use images and metaphors and art to convey what the human words cannot really fully express when we're talking about God, when we're talking about the things of God. So the Church is the Bride of Christ, Mary is the Bride of Christ. This psalm is applied by the Church to Mary today to show how beautiful and faithful and desirable Mary is. When you read the entire psalm, you'll see that beauty, faithfulness, desirability are there 
And the church is saying, this is Mary. And in fact, contrary to the accusation that the Christian church doesn't have much space for women, we have poetry like this. Women enjoy an exalted status in the Christian church and in the sacred scriptures. The second reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, Paul is telling us that Christ is risen from the dead. And we will all rise as well. We will follow each of us in our own time, in our proper order. Christ will give all of us to the Father, hand us all over to the Father, and he has overcome death. Paul is teaching us about the unity of the church, the church militant, the church triumphant, and the church suffering. All of the church together, those of us who've been those of us who are still struggling here on earth, those of us who are already in heaven, those of us who are being purified in purgatory, we're all one church, and that's Paul's message, that we're all being brought together. Paul writes, the last enemy to be destroyed is death. Just ask yourself whether death really is an enemy. Sometimes death is a merciful release. Sometimes death is an opening to a much more peaceful, great, uh, glorious life, an escape from suffering. Why do we consider death to be an enemy if it's really the gateway to the resurrection? Every year in the liturgical cycle, the Church gives us parallels between the life of Mary and the life of Jesus. We have the Annunciation of Jesus, and we celebrate the Immaculate Conception of Mary. We have Christmas, the Nativity of Our Lord, and we celebrate also the birthday of Our Lady. We have the presentation of Jesus in the temple, and we celebrate also the presentation of Mary. On Good Friday, we remember the death, the, the death of Jesus on the cross. Today, we celebrate the Dormition, the falling asleep of Mary. That is accompanied by the ascension of Jesus, and today again, the assumption of Mary into heaven. In a week's time, we're going to celebrate the queenship of Mary. So on the 22nd of August, we'll celebrate the queenship of Mary, and that is parallel to Christ the King. So for everything that's happening in Jesus' life, there's a liturgical parallel in the life of Mary. And the purpose of this parallelism is to tell us that this is our root as well. Mary is one of us. Whatever happens to Jesus happens to Mary. Jesus was conceived, Mary was conceived, we were conceived. Jesus is born, Mary is born, we are born, etc., etc. Whatever happens in the life of Mary happens in our life as well. Except we're not going to be kings and queens of heaven. We're just going to be ordinary citizens in heaven. We are part of the parallelism between Jesus and Mary. Christ, Paul tells us, is the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep, the first to rise from the dead. Where Jesus has gone, we hope to follow. It's appropriate that Mary should be the first to benefit from the graces which Jesus has obtained for all of us. She has not been affected by personal sin the way we are. She should not suffer decay and purgatory as an ordinary mortal would, will. She is pure enough to be admitted directly into the presence of God. She is the first in line, and we are next. Mary is a, is a human being like the rest of us. Although she is not stained by sin, we say she is immaculate. She is not a superwoman. She is not a superman, a superperson and she is certainly not God. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to identify with Mary. Part of Mary's gift to us is that we can identify with her. Her importance for the Church is that we can see ourselves in her. What she has experienced, we also experience. The mysteries of her life give us hope. If it can happen for her, it can happen for us as well with the grace of God. Barack Obama said when he was be being in, uh, started his presidential campaign, yes, we can. 
And we keep that in mind because that's what Mary gives us. If I can do it, you can do it. When you're discouraged or disheartened, you turn to the example of Mary and you see that a person like us can overcome with the grace of God whatever is challenging us. Other Christians often accuse us Catholics of worshipping Mary. We don't worship Mary. They misunderstand us. They haven't read the teaching of the Church, which reminds us about Mary's role in salvation history. Mary consented to be the mother of Jesus, and she allowed his grace to come into the world. Especially Vatican II, the dogmatic constitution of the Church, firmly puts Mary inside the Church, a member of the Church, the Church in Heaven. Number 62 of Lumen Gentium, the dogmatic constitution of the Church, gives Mary the titles Advocate, Auxiliatrix, Adutrix, and Mediatrix. The Constitution continues, This, however, is to be understood in a way that it neither takes away from nor adds anything to the dignity and the efficaciousness of Jesus, the one Mediator. For no creature could ever be counted as equal with the incarnate Word and Redeemer. The Church does not hesitate to profess the subordinate role of Mary. In Lumen Gentium number 68, Mary is described as glorified in body and soul in heaven, and this is where I'm quoting again, as a sign of sure hope and solace to the people of God during its sojourn on earth. So Mary is there as a sign of hope for all of us. We come to the Gospel, that famous story of the visitation. Mary visits her elder cousin Elizabeth and helps her to prepare for the birth of John the Baptist. John the Baptist leaps for joy when he sees Jesus and when he hears the greeting of Mary. He knows that Jesus is close. And then Mary's response is that beautiful psalm which we call the Magnificat, or a canticle, something which we sing day by day in the church. The Magnificat gives us a whole litany of ways that God cares for people who are poor and oppressed. The Magnificat also illustrates Mary's sensitivity towards these poor and oppressed people. We could ask ourselves, does this really happen? in the reality that we have experienced. For example, we've experienced the downfall of apartheid. We've experienced people suffering from poverty, from unemployment, from COVID, from illness. Is it really time for the new, mighty, political and economic elite to be pulled down from their thrones, their separation from the rest of us? Why do we feel that these new political leaders are not worthy of their current positions? Do we believe that the starving are fed and the rich are sent empty away? Do we have sentiment? Do we have sympathy with this sentiment? Or do we also harbor harbor favoritism towards the rich and the mighty? And do we aspire to be like them? That's not the set of values which Mary is presenting to us in the Magnificat. Mary's care for her aged cousin Elizabeth shows her care for all people in whatever plight. Elizabeth praises Mary's faith. Blessed is she who believed that the Lord will fulfill his promises towards her. Today's solemnity could be construed as a celebration of the rewards of faith. But we must be careful of this, because there are many faithful people, maybe some of you attending Mass today, faithful people who don't appear to end with such a rewarding uh, outcome in their lives. Many faithful people still suffer. So finally, what is the take-home message? What's the message we can take home from today's solemnity? Firstly, I would say, even when things get challenging and temptations come our way or life seems too complicated or other opportunities appear more attractive, we look to the example of Mary 
and we are encouraged and we are given fresh hope. We know that Mary's story can be our story, is our story. Yes, we can, with the grace of God. Mary has followed Christ to the end, to victory. Where he has gone, we too hope to follow. We remember always that Jesus is our ultimate goal. But some of us, many of us, find it very encouraging to come to Jesus through Mary. As we make our profession of faith now, we remember that we profess Mary as the Virgin Mother of God. Let us say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We bring our prayers before God our Father. We know that Mary feels with the church. She feels with everybody in every need. We know that she shares our prayers with us as we turn to the Father. For Christians, that Mary may inspire in them a greater generosity in following Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all the human family, that all of God's children may share in the fruits of Christ's redemption. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For world leaders, that Christ, the Prince of Peace, may turn their minds and hearts to thoughts of peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all gathered here, that we may learn from Mary how to serve others with a generous heart and a joyful spirit. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our own special needs. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord our God, we bring you these prayers and the prayers of the whole Church in company of the Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven. We make our prayers, as always, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, the fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever.
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of God's name, rather than before God's holy church. Lord, may this offering, our tribute of homage, rise to you, and through the intercession of the Most Blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, may our hearts, aflame with the fire of love, constantly long for you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It right it's truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For today the Virgin Mother of God was assumed into heaven as the beginning and image of your Church's coming to perfection, and as a sign of sure hope and comfort to your pilgrim people. Rightly, you would not allow her to see the corruption of the tomb, since from her own body she marvelously brought forth your incarnate Son, the author of all life. And so in company with the choirs of angels we praise you, and with joy we proclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, Remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, with Bhutti our Bishop, with all the clergy and all the lay people who serve in your church. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and the blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. Lord, we have received the sacrament of salvation. We ask you to grant that through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, we may be brought to the glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We go in peace and joy to praise and to serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you.